The love affair between Wallace Simpson and the Duke of Windsor was one of the biggest scandals to rock the British monarchy. Wallace was a twice-divorced American and the Duke, referred to as David by Wallace, was forced to abdicate his throne in order to marry her. Wallace was born as Bessie Wallace Warfield in 1896 in Blue Ridge Summit, Pennsylvania. Her parents had gone there to help cure her father's tuberculosis, but it was a fruitless effort, as he passed away just a few months later. Both of Wallace families were from the Old South, but the Montagues of Virginia had lost their fortune after the Civil War. Interestingly, Wallace had more English blood through her genealogy than some members of the British royal family, who later shunned her. It is worth noting that the House of Windsor was originally called the House of saxe coburg gotha a line created through intermarriages between English and German royal cousins. Wallace's father, Tickle Warfield, had been an unsuccessful businessman in Baltimore. After his death, Wallace and her mother moved in with Tickle's mother, but the living arrangements were tense and they were forced to relocate to a different section of the city. For a time, Alice Warfield ran a boarding house to make ends meet. In the end, it was Wallace's wealthy uncle, Solomon Warfield, who supported the women and paid for Wallace's private school education. Wallace Simpson was a vivacious and poised young woman by the time she was 18 years old. In 1916, she met and fell in love with Earl Winfield Spencer, a young naval lieutenant and one of the first 20 men in the U.S. Navy to earn pilot's wings, during a visit to Florida. The couple got married that same year in November. However, their marriage was far from perfect. Spencer had a fondness for alcohol that Wallace did not know about and she detested living on the Pensacola naval base where they lived. The constant sound of the crash gong, which signaled whenever one of the base's planes had gone down, was too much for her to handle. The gong had even tolled for Spencer once when his aircraft dove into the bay, though he was thankfully unhurt. These experiences led to Wallace's lifelong fear of flying and hatred of planes. The couple eventually separated and Wallace settled in Washington near her mother. Her uncle forbade her from filing for divorce, which was a highly scandalous legal act at the time. Wallace had an affair with a dashing Argentinian diplomat but when he tired of her, she was heartbroken and rejoined Spencer in China in 1924. The marriage once again fell apart, but Wallace stayed in China for over two years, living with American friends and supplementing her income with poker winnings. In 1926, Wallace went against her family's wishes and relocated to Virginia for a year to obtain a divorce. Upon her uncle's death, she received a small trust fund that provided her with $60 a month. Unfortunately, the amount was not as substantial as she had hoped, as it was difficult for a woman of her social status to earn any income at that time. Her uncle had left the majority of his fortune to establish a home for aged and indigent gentlewomen and specified that a room be reserved permanently for his niece if she ever needed it. Before her divorce was finalized in late 1927, Wallace met Anglo-American businessman Ernest Simpson. He was a well-educated Harvard graduate and had also ended a difficult marriage. He relocated to London to manage his family's shipping business, while Wallace remained with friends in the south of France. Eventually, she accepted Simpson's marriage proposal as she had few other options. They tied the knot in July 1928. The Simpson family moved to London and fell into a circle of well-connected American expatriates. They became friends with Thelma, Viscountess Furness, who was married but also the mistress of the Prince of Wales. The prince was known for his charm, affability, and was considered the world's most eligible bachelor. Although he wasn't very intelligent, he was a good soul who enjoyed gardening, playing the bagpipes, and charming women. One day, the prince and Wallace Simpson, the matriarch of the Simpson family, met. They soon became close friends and the prince started visiting the Simpsons for dinner. He was so impressed with Wallace's wit and clever banter that he even gave her a cairn puppy as a gift, after noticing her love for dogs. The two of them started traveling together and the palace courtiers were becoming increasingly concerned about the prince's affair with a married American woman. Despite their worries, the prince was deeply in love with Wallace and they continued their relationship. However, when Wallace found out that her husband was having an affair in New York, she hired a lawyer recommended by the prince to handle the situation. The carefree romance between the Prince of Wales and Wallace Simpson suddenly became a critical issue when King George V passed away on January 20, 1936. The Prince of Wales then became Edward VIII after ascending to the British throne, 
but the coronation was delayed until the spring of 1937 to allow for an appropriate period of mourning. Despite his new responsibilities as ruler of over 486 million subjects, Edward and Simpson remained inseparable. In late 1936, Prime Minister Stanley Baldwin became aware of the affair between the new king and Simpson. Edward firmly declared his intention to marry Simpson as soon as her divorce was finalized, causing rumors to start circulating in the British press. Public and conservative outrage grew as the rumor spread. A constitutional crisis was feared as a result of Edward's disregard for advice regarding suitable spouses for the royal family. If he went ahead with his plans, there was the possibility of the entire government resigning in protest, leading to the dissolution of Parliament and a general election. Some even predicted the end of the monarchy itself. As rumors of her impending divorce spread, Wallace Simpson started receiving abusive letters and was faced with crowds gathering outside her London apartment. Her final divorce was due in April 1937, with the coronation scheduled for May 12. However, the new king, Edward, had plans to boycott the ceremony unless he was allowed to marry Simpson, since there was no actual statute that prevented him from marrying anyone he chose, except for a Roman Catholic. This caused opposition from the ruling Tory government. Simpson tried to discourage Edward from jeopardizing his throne by leaving England, but a firm display of political opposition finally pushed the exhausted and distressed king to abdicate. On December 10, 1936, Edward announced his intentions in a nationwide radio broadcast. He declared that he could not fulfill his duties as king and carry out the heavy responsibility without the support of the woman he loved. This marked the end of one of the most heavily reported media stories of the decade. Edward was given the title Duke of Windsor, while his brother, Bertie, became the new king. The Duke of Windsor agreed to never return to England without the permission of the reigning sovereign, in exchange for a generous annual income. The Duke and Mrs. Simpson finally united in holy matrimony after a long period of separation. A terrier, which the Duke had once gifted to her, was sent to her as a token of their reconciliation. Sadly, the pet was bitten by a snake and passed away, causing Mrs. Simpson to break down in tears. She saw it as an ill omen. Their wedding took place on June 3, 1937, but it was far from a royal affair. The Anglican cleric who performed the ceremony was reprimanded and no member of the royal family attended. The Duke received a letter from his brother, the King, declaring that any children from their marriage would not be considered royalty and that Mrs. Simpson would not be granted the title Her Royal Highness. After the wedding, the newlyweds traveled to Nazi Germany where they were received by Adolf Hitler, which further damaged their reputation. When World War II broke out in 1939, the Duke was summoned back to England to serve in the military. As the German army advanced in France, the couple fled to neutral Spain and then Portugal. Winston Churchill, now Prime Minister, offered the Duke a government position, but he hesitated, hoping to secure the HRH title for his wife. British leaders were concerned that the couple's past affiliation with the Nazi regime made them vulnerable, and the Germans could potentially abduct them and reinstate the Duke on the British throne after invading the country. In August 1940, the Duke and Duchess of Windsor took up residency in the Bahamas where the Duke was serving as governor. Despite not liking the heat, the Duchess found solace in occasional shopping trips to New York and Palm Beach. In 1941, a report of their visit to a Canadian ranch with 146 pieces of luggage sparked negative publicity about the Duchess and her lavish taste in clothes and jewelry. After the war, the Windsors lived in France, eventually settling in a home on the Bois de Boulogne just outside of Paris. In the 1950s, both wrote their autobiographies and the Duchess was regularly named one of the world's best-dressed women. By the late 1960s, the Duke had somewhat reconciled with his family and in 1967, the couple made a formal visit to England. Tragically, the Duke was diagnosed with throat cancer in 1971 and passed away on May 28, 1972. Queen Elizabeth visited the couple in Paris and the Duchess was invited to stay at Buckingham Palace for the Duke's funeral. A photo captured her looking desolate as she watched the annual trooping of the colours from a palace window. After the Duke of Windsor's death, the Duchess of Windsor led a solitary life in Paris. Her health deteriorated, and she was diagnosed with coronary artery disease. Throughout the 1980s, she lived a reclusive life, rarely seen by the public. 
On April 24, 1986, she passed away peacefully at her home in Paris. Most of her wealth was bequeathed to the Pasteur Institute. The Duchess was laid to rest next to her husband at the Royal Mausoleum in Frogmore. And so, the life of Wallace Simpson came to a close. May she rest in peace. Goodbye.